Well, welcome to today's Facebook Live. I'm in Garner, North Carolina, uh, and I'm here with Matthew Butler. I had a little delay here. I got lost, which is what happens when I come to North Carolina. It happened uh, 25 years ago when I was in the military, and it still happens. So it's a beautiful state, and I got to see more of it today. And uh, thank Matthew for waiting about an hour for me to find the right... What, what's the name of the road we're on? Hebron Church Road. I found the right Hebron Church Road. I was on a different Hebron Church Road. Who would have known there was that many? But uh, there's only one Matthew Butler in Tennessee signing class, and he's sitting next to me. He's a guy that Tennessee fans should be excited about. He's a guy that's going to play this year. Um, can't tell you who told me that, but one of the coaches said he will play this year. And uh, before we went live here on Facebook, I saw why when he knocked out, what, 24 or 25 reps of 225 on the bench. And just to give you some perspective on that, I think Derek Barnett did 21. Now Derek had some shoulder issues, but still, uh, this young man is already lifting at an NFL clip. And certainly he has that prototypical size. You know, maybe 20 pounds shy of being a D-tackle, maybe right on the spot for being a D-N. So we'll see how he grows. Now, Matthew, how big are you right now? What are, what are the uh, specs, if you will? Well, I'm 6'4", 268 pounds. 6'4", 268. And it was, what, 24 reps on there, wasn't yes, it? Yes, 24. Okay, 24 reps. And then you told me you set a, a personal best in another lift today. Oh, I uh, 325 power clean today. It's my new max. So if you power clean, that, is that like straight up here to your chest or is that like over your head? Oh, no, sir. Just uh, from the ground, uh, oh. a deadlift, a hot pull, okay. shrug it, and get it on your chest, elbows up. Okay. Wow. All right. How about 325? Yes, sir. All right. So basically, he can lift and throw just about anybody in his way. Um, and that's good because there's going to be a lot of offensive linemen in front of him not too long from now. We're just a few weeks away yes, sir. from uh, being out of high school here. I got to tell you, it's a beautiful high school, by the way, but... Uh, Matthew, I, I saw you at the Orange and White game. You, you look ready to dress that day. Yes, sir. They actually were joking around with me just because of, um, you know, some injury situations and whatnot. To, hey, 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 just sneak into the locker room and get dressed. And <laughs> believe me, if that was legal, if I would have been able to get away with it, I would have. And I would have been as prepared as I could have been because I've been working real hard to, really even before signing there just because I know the goals that I have in mind. Yeah, you were in, we'll get to those outrageous goals. As you said, I was trying to come up with a headline. I said, what are your reveals? What, your goals or championship goals? He said, yeah. He said, I got championship goals. He goes, actually, I've got some goals that some people would say are pretty outrageous. But, but before we get to that, part of the whole Facebook Live interview thing and why we do this Next Generation series is to kind of find out, you know, where the athlete comes from. And not just athletically, but even personally. And I thought it was interesting you told me you lived in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Your father was in the military. Military families tend to have a lot of discipline in terms of um, the kids are usually really well-mannered. They're very good with time allotment. When did that really start to kick in for you, just in terms of what's made you the person that you are, as a, and not just football, but just in the classroom as well? Um, I feel like it was just kind of like the environment that I was in between just um riding with my dad to the commissary and seeing all these people who are going in and doing what they have to do and getting it done like that was just always the mindset I have like get what you need have to do done and um I went to a private school for a while to where you know I mean quite frankly they didn't accept better, anything less than excellence and um excellence was what I wanted to do it's always the excellence was the goal so um it was set at a young age and I've realized um, where it got me and where it can take me and I just kept on that uh, straight and narrow path. So you know basically Matthew's telling me he's got a high standard for himself and I mean I guess we all have that unconscious conscious you know what's good enough for us you know uh, how well does the lawn have to be mowed before you say it's done right and I guess in the case of Matthew uh, you've applied this to your school as well as your uh, weight room and you know earlier we were talking about maybe doing something in the school and I said well we don't we really don't want to be too much of a distraction but tell me about your academic background we know you can play football but being able to handle the academics the course load and the time management is what's going to enable Matthew to spend the time in the weight room and the individual workout time you'll need to maybe play right away so tell me about your your academic background well um all my life I've been on the a on a roll. I've had 4.0 GPA throughout my high school career. Um, you know, it, it gets tough, you know, taking AP classes and stuff like that, especially in junior year. My sophomore year, I'm not even going to lie, I was taking advanced courses and it was a breeze. But in my junior year, when I started taking the AP courses and I realized that, like, I'm taking these courses and these are college courses, mm -hmm. there are people, freshmen and sophomores in college, taking what I'm taking now, that's when it kind of got difficult. Had to buckle down, had to, um, 
you know, a lot my time a little better. I had to realize, you know, what I was really doing. And I mean, within the course of maybe a week, I guess my mindset just kind of changed just a little bit enough to where, you know, it even became easy. And once I, you know, figured out what I was doing and got my mindset right, it, I went through and um, passed my exams. And now I'm doing the same thing this year. I took two exams this week and one more exam uh, next week. And then I'm pretty much done with high school after that. Okay, so there you go. So when he's done with football, he's gonna write a book. How to Make AP Classes Easy by Matthew Butler. One and two week courses. And after one or two weeks, anybody can do it. It's going to be that simple. No, obviously it was something you had to buckle down. I mean, you talked about how you figured it out. What you really did was probably assert yourself more. And, and that's got to take away some time in other places, Matthew. When you look back at this academic career you've had, and, and how many AP classes have you taken so far? Five. Five. So technically you'll be going in what? Almost? I'll be going in as long as... I, I'm very confident about my psychology uh, this year. I'm still waiting to hear from Tennessee Admissions Office about my APUS history, and um, I'm confident about my English that I took two days ago. So I could come in essentially with, uh, I don't know how many hours each credit almost is, a semester three or four credits. Yeah, yeah, almost a semester's worth of work, and it's a good way to get ahead. And not that, not that he, not that anybody wants to see him leave early, but if he is a three-year player, he might be able to get his degree in three years. And oh yeah, and that's something I've discussed with uh, Marshall, our uh, um, academic counselor. He said that everybody's on try to graduate in three and a half, but uh, starting at the beginning of sophomore year, he actually uh, starts initiating the courses and. Um, just doing all the essential things necessary to graduate in three years if that's what you want to do. And that's something that I plan to do, and you know, quite frankly, I, I will do it. One, one, of, one of the goals, maybe not as outrageous as some of the other goals that we're going to get to, but I got a feeling Matthew's got a goal for, like, everything. Um, what I was getting to is when you spend that time working out as you have, playing sports as you have, or in the classroom, taking the AP classes, that doesn't just come easy. I know, you, I know you said it was easy after a couple of weeks, but it was time. There was time invested. What were some of the sacrifices that you had to make? I've got to think there were times that, you know, maybe it's not playing kickball in the yard, but you want to go hang out with your friends. There had to be times you had to give some of that up. Um, yeah, hanging out with my friends is always great. I, I feel like, you know, I know a ton of people. Like, I, like if you would have came any time during school day, it probably was good that you did it because everyone was like, oh, my gosh, you're doing another interview, blah, 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 blah. hey, Matthew, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> right, right. And then, um, but, you know, know a lot of people, but the people that I'm close with, they have the same or relatively the same goals as me, you know, be the best at whatever it is they're doing, whether it be football or whether it be in school or just whether it be just uh, providing for their family, for their brothers and sisters, mother and father, or just making their mother and father proud. That's all something that's on my list of goals so I mean it's on their list of goals too we're so similar that I mean hanging out with them is just bettering myself okay so w when did this when did this mindset kick in like, and when did you um, when did you conscientiously realize that you were going to apply yourself at an, at an elite level and not settle for less I guess uh when I transferred well I didn't really transfer I moved here and I had to go here like nobody recruited me to come here but when I came here um I saw the standard that it had for football. And at my old school, like, I was a great football player. I played on the JV for a few games, got pulled up to varsity, and played with some elite players, like Harold Landry, who just led the whole NCAA in sacks. I played with him, got mentored. Was that your freshman year? Yeah, my freshman year. That was awesome to me. And then Lamont Gallier, who's at Georgia, and he's actually tra transferred to O-Lon, and I could maybe get a few matchups versus him this year. And, you know, those were great people that I got um, some knowledge from. But... Even when I came here, it was still still a different level, and I met this, uh, met men like Coach Leach, my head coach, and Coach Reed, my position coach, that instilled in me these values of, you know, hey, we're depending on you, and we're not just depending on you for no reason. We're depending on you because we see the qualities that we need in a player. And then Coach Reed, he told me, told us one day, um, conference championship my sophomore year. He said, "Do y'all know why y'all are doing this?" And a lot of people was looking at him, win the game, right? In my head, I knew where he was going with that. I've dealt with this man every day since the summer when it was hot, when it was cold, when he was mad, when I was mad, when I had heard him say things a thousand times and when he seen me mess up a thousand times. So I knew where he was going with it. He just said, y'all need to find y'all's why. And um, I texted him yesterday and I, he, did, he didn't he did know that, like, that how that really impacted me. Like, if you find your why, there's no reason why you would ever stop doing what you're right. doing. That's why, even though this is, could be a headache coming from the weight room, 
back home studying, you get up and do the exact same thing all over again every single day, it's really nothing if you know why you're doing it. Right, right. If you see that light at the end of the tunnel and it's something to, to direct your energies towards, and uh, boy, that's a, that, that'll be a great motivational speech, but you're absolutely right, you know. And, and are, there, are there things out there that are more important than your goal? And so many people get sidetracked, whether it's too much time <coughs> on Twitter, or too much time playing video games, or, or one too many, or three too many fast food meals, because those things become more important than their why. But as you said, if you find your why and you find your goal, then that takes a priority over all those potential distractions and things that can take. And, and for a young man, and how old are you, Matthew? 17. For a 17-year-old young man, to have a grip on these things that some people don't learn until much later in life, if they learn it at all, is pretty impressive to me and it explains part of why, uh, uh, speaking of why, who you are and why you are what you are at this stage of your life now. Have you always been an athlete? Was it always football for you? Actually, I, I really liked baseball when I was You were a baseball up. player, okay. Yes, um, I was a pretty good baseball player. Um, I pitched. I, 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 I played every position. And then I played basketball and Basketball was well, ba well. I grew out of baseball just because there's too many times where you're standing still. Right. And uh, basketball, um, basketball was great. I really felt like if I would, if I would have stuck to any sport, I mean, I'm not trying to go to anything, but I really felt like I could go to some college for any sport. Sure. Whether it be sh throwing the shot put, if I just would have stuck to throwing the shot put, or stuck to basketball, or stuck to baseball, or did what I'm doing right now, I would have been somewhere. You know, just doing what I had to do. When did you give up those other sports? Um, baseball. My sophomore year, I came here and tried out for the baseball team. I made the team, but then um, the next day, they tried, wanted me to try out for the track team, and um, I threw a qualifying regional throw. On the um, tryout? On a tryout. Yeah, so they okay. said, um, yeah, you're, you're doing they said um, hey, you know, you're a good baseball player, <laughs> but, I mean, we have, we have a lot of good baseball players who can't throw a <laughs> shot put. So, you know, I, I threw the shot put. Um, I played basketball um, all the way up until junior year. Um, made it to near very close to state champions, state championships. Uh, won three conference titles and all kinds of stuff. This through your year, junior year? Yeah, through my junior year. This school, as far as uh, boys sports, is best in the county. We this year we actually yesterday we won the baseball conference championship. We won the track conference championship, football and basketball. You know we're on a roll right now. We're we're doing well. So. Yeah, this school is real good at sports, and I played um, just about all of them. And this year, I just stuck to football, and I'm actually still throwing shot put, but I'm throwing shot put so I can run with the track team too. I run, I throw. I, yeah, what do you what I do practice. you run? Tell me about what do you run in track? Oh, I, I ran the 100 a week ago. How'd you do in that? What was your time out in there? Uh, 1204. Okay. Which isn't, it, it's yeah. not, it's, you know, it doesn't break any records, but yeah. for somebody nearing 270 pounds. That's not bad. And it, hey, it, if, if if you're racing me, you're, you're not going to beat me. Right. You get different because speed like, for that. You right? know, racing against people who run at 11 or something <laughs> like that, you know, might not beat them. But if, you, you may not catch Ty Chandler if you're running back, but. Uh, I'll totally. get an angle. I'll get an angle. <laughs> now, uh, what about, uh, did, have you timed in the 40? And you, have you done any of those measurables that. Oh, yeah. Um, like the 40, uh, my fastest time was probably uh, four weeks ago. I ran a 4.75 on the track, a 4.78 wow. on the grass. I don't, okay. I don't try to focus on the 40 too much. No, because really it's because the first 10 steps or five steps, right? Because when I get on campus in three weeks, it's going to be about my hand extension, and keeping my thumbs up, hand placement, getting off the block violently, throwing the offensive lineman, not just, you know, keeping him on his feet so he can recover, throwing them, and then my ability to rush the passer, which I just demonstrated all of my senior year. I had 26 sacks. And, 26 sacks? Yes. I would have thought they would have seen you coming by then. Did you keep changing uh, your numbers for every game? or you just Actually, that, that might have been, <laughs> who knows, that might have been part of it. I wore 45 last year because I played tight end, and then I played wore 79 this year playing some offensive tackle. And that's the one thing I feel like I bring to the game as well. I'm tough, I'm versatile on offense and defense. I'm, I'm playing defense at Tennessee, no doubt about that. But I'm versatile just as far as I'll do what you need me to do. I'm coachable. And, I mean, really, I feel like in these 10 weeks since signing day, I feel like I've developed into a football player who not only has an even 
more different mindset than 10 weeks ago, but I'm just a better player than 10 weeks ago. I'm a stronger player than 10 weeks ago. I've been better than 10 weeks ago. I get off the box better than 10 weeks ago just because this is what I've been doing for 10 weeks. This is just training. Like, so how many days a week are you training? Then? Six. Six days a week? And some in the weight room and then some out, right? How does that work? Um, well, every day I have, well, the book is right there, but uh, I have a book sent to me by uh, Coach Rock and staff, and I've stuck to it dig dil diligently. I haven't missed a workout in it. And um, I also go to my trainer on Wednesdays and Saturdays, and he said that I've progressed. He's, he's coached guys like um, Dexter Lawrence, who's at Tennessee, who I, I will be surprised if he's not a top 10 draft pick in a, in a year. Uh, two years, should I say? Where Dexter Lawrence is where is he at? Clemson. Clemson. Okay. Yeah, he's trained guys like him. He said that um I've, and I mean I'm taking his word for it. I I haven't seen Dexter train or anything, but I've played against him. He's quite he's quite the athlete. But he said that I'm on the same track as him as far as how I can dominate college football my freshman year, and that's one of my goals too, just to dominate college football. Like every Tennessee fan probably knows who I am by now, but I want the UCLA fans and the uh, Penn State fans. You want to hear your name Florida on ESPN fans. game day? Yeah, just like you know, or the SEC Freak of the Week thing. Yeah, you, I got, you can hold up the sign and say Butler did it every time he gets a sack, right? <laughs> the yeah. Butler did it. You got to come up with something. Somebody can come up with it now. But yeah, you want to? You want to? I would that actually that. laugh if somebody said that. <laughs> that that was like, funny. I like, I like that, that yeah. too. Yeah. Uh, so w the recruiting, I mean, we're, we're sitting here in North Carolina, six or seven hours or six hours away from Knoxville. There's a lot of schools between here and Knoxville. How did you end up at Tennessee? Well, um, first of all, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and gloat. I really am not. But I've had conversations and I've really been mm -hmm. real with myself. And I feel like coming out of my sophomore year, I could have gone to any school in the nation and I could have dominated there because I just know how my mindset was, and I really dominated my sophomore year. I had 38 tackles for loss. Like not 38 people. tackles for loss at the yes. varsity level? Yes. And this is a this class 6A school, right? This is Well, this is North Carolina. We have 1A, 1AA, et cetera, up to 4A, and we're in 4AA. So, so this is the biggest, right? Yes. And yeah. I, I mean, I dominated on big stages. I, I had great games, but, you know, it was all good. I kind of had to wait till the summer after my sophomore year to get a few local offers, but it was really all good. But um, going into my junior year, I, I displayed um, even more of a, a strength and skill set. I started running around. I was basically a linebacker playing defensive tackle as far as how I was running around and yeah. chasing, chasing things. And that's when uh, my offer sheet blew up. I got an offer from Tennessee probably in late January. Yeah, January after my junior year. And um, Coach Stigpen, he always kept it real with me. He always was um, straightforward. He told me the guys he was recruiting. He told me where I was on a priority list. I wasn't ridiculously high I was probably like if they were if they were um he told me at one point that they were uh, recruiting 12 defensive linemen very strong and that I was probably uh third or fourth in that in those uh 12 people wow. just because he, he liked me he saw how I was he met my dad my mom he met my brother and sister he had just always liked me just because they just so happened to be here the day that he came by he liked me he liked how I played and then I got down there in the summer after talking to uh, Coach Jones. Uh, that was that summer after your junior year? Yes, several times on the phone. Met Coach Strip um, over the spring and just uh, met a lot of guys and they all liked me. And then I came over the summer after midway through the summer. I actually had a knee surgery. Um, only kept me out two weeks. I really felt like just my like like meniscus. A meniscus? I just felt like the way I was working out and the way that all my muscles around the meniscus were so strong that um, they did the surgery out moved on so right. it doesn't bother me to this day or anything but um they had seen that I was b probably a little bigger than I was on film muscle mass and um they liked my demeanor my personality I like the team you know I talked to some guys and they were just really passionate about what they who were did. some of the guys that you talked to uh, I talked to Khalil I talked to uh I talked to a commitment that was a, a former commitment and I just kind of um saw I talked to him about what he saw in the program I talked to Khalil, I talked to Corey Vereen, who was on the team. Corey, Corey and I have a good relationship. I talked to just a lot of guys, and they were passionate about what was going on. They were excited about what was going on. And that's why those silly stories, like um, the one that came out uh, while I was at the Shrine Bowl, so in December. It was um, a North Carolina, South Carolina game, right? Yes, uh, that was just so crazy to me. I called Coach Jones. Did it say you were not going to go to Tennessee or something? Or was there oh, no, I was, I was still going, but I called Coach Jones, and I was just like, you know, what's up with these stories? And he was just like, I talked to the guys, and I talked to the media, and, um, and then 
next day actually is the day that he addressed it with like some passion and, and said that you know that what was said was erroneous that it was false and you know just addressed it but um i i had always known about the passion at tennessee and i was i was excited about it so uh i left um that that visit with uh tennessee high high in my head and um you're actually about to get some exclusive information. This is good. This so, is uh, why people are watching. So um, I came back later on that summer. I worked with Chuck Smith, and um, you know, I just wanted to work with them. I wanted to see like how they worked. I saw I saw the mentality that everybody had, but now I wanted to see how they worked. So I got to work out with Chuck Smith in the Chuck Smith camp that he hosted at Tennessee, and then I got to watch the guys: Derek Barnett, Corey Vereen, Latroy Lewis, and uh, Khalil and Shy. All of those guys worked with him after, and it was just great. I love how they were zoned in and. Uh, Coach Smith has so much good to say about me. I, I didn't know what I was doing so right, but I guess I was doing it right. I was just locked in. I was happy to soak in all of that knowledge. And then that's when I knew I was going to Tennessee. And um, I didn't tell Coach Jones because I, I wasn't sure, quite frankly. And um, we left that visit. And the thing is, no matter how many people were always there on a, on a recruiting visit, Coach Jones found several times to talk to me and uh, always made me a priority and then made my priorities a priority for him. Like on uh, Orange Carpet Day, Orange Carpet. Was, Boy, there were so many that. days people yeah. there, yeah. but he made it a point to send me to the academic counselor, let me meet a professor, talk to him extensively, talk to Coach Strip. Coach Strip and I, that is when our relationship just uh, went through the roof. We just started talking football and we realized how similar we were as uh, people. And um, that's when I knew I was going to go. But, you know, I talked to my family and I actually uh, silently committed on August 1st last year. And, um, Coach Jones asking, you know, why are you silently committing? He was just like, I, I, and I, this is the honest truth. Like, I saw where my football team was going, like, as far as here at Garner High School. And I really felt like if I were to commit, that it would be a purity distraction for everybody. Right. And I decided I'm going to silently commit. And I said, Coach Jones, I give you my word, I'm coming to Tennessee. He said, Are you going to take any official visits? I said, Yes, sir. He said, okay. And I told you, I said, I'll give you my word. I'm coming to Tennessee, sir. That's where I want to be. And I can give you a hundred reasons why I want to come. Right. And I gave him, I gave him 10. <laughs> yeah, I actually gave and him 10 gave on him the phone. <laughs> yeah, I gave him 10 on the phone. I had to <laughs> convince more. him, right? Yeah, I had to, I had to tell him. And he believed me. <laughs> and um, he saw him. He, he would call me after each official visit. He was like, you know, how was Coach Sumlin? How was Coach Doran? <laughs> I'll be like, you know, where, where did you? Where were some of the places you went to? Oh, I went to NC State and Duke on official visits, Rick. local places, and then Penn State and uh, mm -hmm. Texas A&M. Yeah. And really, the reason why I went on my official visits is because I love football. Like, I can't just sit in the house all day when right. I have five official visits. You got a chance to go to a stadium? I could go, to, I could game, go right? to uh um a big stadium in Texas, and then go see all these crazy people at Penn State. And I'm yeah. gonna say no. I mean, no, thank you. Right. Um, I'm gonna go. And Coach Jones understood that. And Coach Jones, I feel like he trusts me, and I trust him. I would text him every day. I text him after the Georgia game. I texted him after the Florida game the first time. That's the first time I just started texting him. And I was just like, Coach, I love your passion, man. Like after that game, you see him he was on the jumping up and down. <laughs> I saw him go up to the referee and call a timeout with four seconds yeah. left just to. Just rub it in uh, Coach McElwain or whatever his name is. Face. <laughs> and, um, I, and then I saw him after the Georgia game and that spectacular performance by everybody. That uh, I, I want to say two-minute drill, but, I mean, that was just a Hail Mary. And it was just wonderful. Yeah. I texted him after. And I just feel like that that's when he and I, even though that's a head coach, and, you know, we're not going to have all kinds of interaction sure. once I get on campus. That That's when, you know, we really – uh, bonded and we just saw each other for who we really were like I was the guy who I'm watch, watching Tennessee games and he's coaching Tennessee games and we're both passionate about the same thing and I think that's how it really started clicking uh, a nice story is uh, I watched um, the Tennessee Georgia game in South Carolina Stadium while watching South Carolina play Texas A&M. Oh, okay. And, oh, that was um, in South Carolina? Yes. Okay. So I was watching South Carolina play Texas A&M. You know, I'm just kind of there. I'm knowing I'm going to Tennessee. I'm just kind of there. And um, I look up and I'm just like, I, I know the Tennessee game's going on. I'm following it on my phone. And I look up and they put it on the board. And I saw Jacob Eason throw, or is that his name? Yeah, Whatever yeah. his name is. Um, you'll you'll throw, get to know him pretty soon. Yeah, he'll get to know him <laughs> pretty soon. Um, so um, I saw him throw that and I was like, I was like, okay, the game's not over. I just said you knew I, that it wasn't over. You went Georgia school. Something was like ten happen. seconds left, right? Yeah, I, I, they I celebrated, right? Yeah, they they celebrated. crazy. 
got the penalty and everything. Yeah, yeah. And, they, and then they got the penalty. That's why I was like, oh, yeah, it's definitely yeah. not over. <laughs> so I saw Josh Dobbs throw that Hail Mary. And when I say everybody in there was booing and mad, I was going berserk. I was so happy. I was running around the stands. There was guys, you know, my friends there. I was like, did you see that? Did you see that? Just like, what do you like, Tennessee or something? I was like, oh, no, I don't know. Time. Yeah, I like Tennessee, <laughs> yeah. you know. But, you know, that was just a fantastic experience. And just following Tennessee football, the ups and downs and in-betweens and just the passion that Coach Jones has about coaching, I just really fell in love with it. And once I had a opportunity without distracting my teammates and at the right time to verbalize and uh, solidify my commitment, I was just excited about it. And now I'm signed and about to leave. Yeah, well, you're a fast study. You know, when I was talking with Matthew before we did this, he's – he knows everybody that's coming in with him. He knows what guys lifted at the combine. I mean, you. This is your science. Football is a science for you. I know you work hard. You work hard in the classroom, but you keep up with things. So you say you like Coach Jones' passion. So you like it, you know. And, and I've brought this up with other recruits because the public, I don't think, really understands when he says the five-star hard stuff. That that's something that excites you. That the head coach recognizes the character of the class. And that, that was one thing I liked too. Just like he would talk to me. He had talked to me one time. Um, I had asked him um, uh, in the time between my silent commitment and uh, uh, public commitment. I, was, I had just asked him about one of the guys he was recruiting. And he was just like, I don't know if we're going to be able to take this guy, blah, 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 et cetera, character issues, blah, 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 et cetera. And, I'm, and then I just, I admired that. You know, the kid was a good player. Everybody being recruited by Tennessee is a good player. Right. right. But the fact that Coach Jones could say, hey, I don't want this guy in our culture, ruining our culture, this, that, and the third. Especially because there have been some people, like you said and like I've observed, that right. messed up the culture at Tennessee. You know, he knows what he's doing. He not only is bringing in talent, he's bringing in <coughs> guys with character, guys who are not going to the, the, uh, make the T on their chest look like anything but the power T. Right. You know. Yeah, you don't want anybody that's going to diminish the program. Everybody's got to kind of... You know, and that's, that's what I saw in 98 when they won their national title was it was an all-in mentality and, you know, somewhat similar. And, and again, I don't want to sit here and, you know, when I make these comparisons between 98 and 97, people go, oh, you think they're going to win a national title? Well, no, on paper, no, you can't project it. They're going to win a national title. But you can if you want you, I mean, well, Matthew is going to – you know, he's his, that's what he's supposed to think. But for all – what happened between 97 and 98 was that Tennessee lost Peyton Manning. And everybody thought when they lost this great player, and, and, and obviously Peyton is arguably the greatest quarterback that's ever played the game, whether we're talking college or five-time NFL MVP, but when they lost him, everybody recognized that there was going to be a big void. And so that made everyone raise their game. And Al Wilson was pushing, you know, they believed in T. Martin. He'd only thrown, I think, 16 career passes. But... Everybody said, you know what, we're more than Peyton Manning, and we have to show that. And everybody got on board with this no-stars mentality is what, what Al called it back then. And, and as we were talking about before, you know, when Tennessee loses a guy like a Josh Dobbs and they lose a guy like a Derek Bernard, I mean, these are two game changers. I, I think if you take Josh Dobbs away, you're, you're maybe taking three or four wins away. You take Bar Derek Barnett away, we might be talking about two or three wins because these were game-changing players. So... There may not be the next Josh Dobbs on the roster right now, and I don't see the next Derek Barnett unless I'm sitting next to him in a few years, but um, everybody has raised their game. That's what Rock Cullickson's done in the strength and conditioning program. And this 2017 class, these guys, these, these five-star hearts, as Butch calls them, I mean, I, every, to a man, every guy I've talked to has talked about championship expectations. And i got to think, as you said, you could have gone anywhere, You've got to have a vision to think that Tennessee can win a title if you're going to choose them over the Clemsons, the FSUs, the Penn States. Uh, I don't know where else, where else you did it. Texas a and Texas a and places like that. I mean, what do you see? What, what, is this, what do these 2017 guys see? And what do you see in Butch Jones that makes you believe that, that he's going to be able to leave the Vols where they need to be? It was just the passion. And then it, me and Coach Strip, we had a really tight relationship. And, um, Coach Domes actually, he called me um, probably a couple weeks before, probably a week and a half, like right as soon as I got, a uh, little after I committed, actually no, a little after my um, official visit, let me know, you know, what he was going to do as far as the defensive line group and the defensive line coach. 
And I just said, the first thing I asked him, I said, will Coach Strip be on somewhere Coach on your Coach Strip, staff? right. That's why he's the right. And that's important. The other guys I talked to also like Coach Strip. Right? Yes. So he said yes. He said that he and Coach Strip's loyalty goes back very deep, mm -hmm. deeply to um, Eastern or Western Michigan. Right, right, um, right. You know, and I just always like Coach Strip. I, I have met almost everybody in his family. I met his wife and one of his children. And, I mean, he, it's, it's almost crazy how, like, um, I saw his wife, and um, out of a whole group of people, she said, "Hey, Matthew." It was just, right. it was, it was just uncanny, and it, it just made me realize like this is really like a place I can call home. And that was just two weeks ago. He remembered me all the way from six months prior to that. Wow! So it makes a difference. Now you've had a chance to meet Coach Oak, right? Yes. Of course, him and Coach Stripling was on his staff at Michigan, and they kind of go back ways. Any initial impressions of Coach Oak? Well, Coach Oak, well. Um, First, I talked to the guys about Coach Hoke. I talked to Khalil, I talked to Congo, and I talked to DeAndre a little about Coach Hoke. They said that he coaches hard. That's what I need. Because when I came here, I was coached hard by Coach Reed, who, whom I love. He's my best friend. He's like a second dad. You know, he, he's coaches me hard, and that's what I wanted in a coach. That's what I saw in Coach Strip, and that's why I see in Coach Hoke. They're all going to coach me hard, and that's what I want because – there's going to be days to where I, I don't feel like hearing them at all, but I'm going to remember that why, and I'm going to listen to them and apply what I need to apply. But I, I knew he was going to coach hard. So I came in, I gave him a handshake, and everybody says the same thing when I shake their hand. Why are you shaking my hand so hard? Right. And, and, I mean, I, I, I'm always going to do that. And, you know, just the fact that he could joke with me right off the bat, you know, I like. And then he sat me down. We looked at some film. Um, I show him some videos on my phone. I don't really post videos because you, you'll see in the fall what, I, what I'm doing. But um, I showed him some videos on my phone, just of my hand uh, placement and extension. He coached me. Like, I always learn something every time I'm on campus, so I've always liked that. And um, he taught me things, taught to Coach Ollie. And then Coach Hoke said, you know, uh, what are you going to do now? And um, I told him I was going to go lift and work out on the field. It was raining that day, but I still worked out on the field and lifted and worked with Corey and some guys. And um, he observed me. And then I came back up later, and he was just like, hey, I love what you're doing. We talked some more, and he likes the weight I'm at. And um, I Where like Where are you at right now? 268. 268, okay. Yeah. So um, he likes the weight I'm at. I, I, I dropped some weight since um, probably y'all last heard my weight. I was... 280 at my official visit, and I mean, if any of y'all have ever been on official visit, y'all are gonna gain weight too. Right. There's a lot of food there, and you're gonna eat it. Right. But I mean, I lost that weight in a week, right. and I've kept it on, kept it off since then. I haven't gone above 270 since um, the end of since uh yeah probably since the end of January. So um, that's the weight I'm at. He likes what I'm what I'm doing. He coached me up. I mean, he says he really feels like I have some potential to play, but I mean, in my head, I I know that I'm playing. Like as long as I keep doing what I'm doing, I'm, I'm going to play in my head. And until somebody absolutely proves me wrong, then that's how I'm thinking. Yeah, you know, we were talking earlier a little bit about Coach Shoup, who's you know kind of the whole mastermind of the whole you know rocket. You know, he's just he's a smart guy, and yes. you know that with the different things he does in the schemes, and you've already studied him. You know how many of the did you say he had some Penn State guys went to the NFL? Oh, yeah, he had a lot. When he was at Penn State, he had a lot of guys go to the NFL. Um, he had uh, his whole starting defensive line go to the NFL, and his uh, starting left end had the most sacks in college football. Um, so Right. So you, and you were saying he was kind of wishing you could have graduated early. With with all the AP classes, do they just not have an early graduation? Oh, no. Here? So what, what it is is I have four classes today, and I have a totally different four classes on Monday. I didn't take, like, that's how the school is here. It's not like four classes one semester and take everything you need, but it's four classes on Monday, different four classes on Tuesday, different on Wednesday, and it just goes all the way around. Wow, that's kind of so, different, huh? Yeah, I don't like it at all because <laughs> I'm kind of studying for eight things at once, but it is what it is. I'm, I'm ready for college. It's preparing me. Yeah, that's our uh, settings warning. I'm going to take a look at our some of our questions here, Matthew, and see if we got anybody that wants to ask you any questions. I see there's a lot of people sharing the video um, a lot of people obviously like it love the comparison between now and 98 well now don't hold that to, don't hold me to that hold but me to it. yeah I mean, matthew says hold him to it that's right he says what number do you have at tennessee kyle hubbard wants to know number 56 mr hubbard 56 what are you majoring in matthew Heather political moody. science miss moody moody all right what else do we got here the interactive 
Like this kid a lot. Yeah, he seems, yeah, Joe, he seems to like Tennessee too. Can I get my tires rotated while I watch? Hutchinson says. Sure. <laughs> yeah, good role model. I think that's kind of part of the goal here. Um, 4.0 student, yeah. That's not typically what uh, you see on the defensive line or what you think about on the defensive line, but Matthew is obviously not your typical recruiter football player, and that's because he holds himself to a much higher standard. What's your favorite part about D-line, James Reed wants to know? Favorite line about playing on the D-line? Favorite thing about playing on the D-line? Yeah, it's like I don't know who he is. I know who James Reed is. Oh, you know that's who James Reed is? That's my position coach. Oh, he's giving you a hard time. Okay, I yeah, got it. It's give it. Get it to the money, coach. Get it to the quarterback. <laughs> you know this. Yeah, that's good. That's, uh, that's yeah. pretty funny. They're getting to the quarterback. Uh, your favorite, v oh, your favorite VFL. Okay. Um, I mean, talking to Derek Barnett and seeing how he plays. I I've liked Derek Barnett since even before I had a notion of that I was even halfway interested in Tennessee. So Derek Barnett, all-time favorite, boom. So, um, and then my major is political science. So now you told me you had some outrageous goals. Now that Derek Barnett knew coming in what he was in. You know, he's the only player in SEC history that had double-digit sacks three consecutive seasons. And of course, he's got the record at 33. Um, is that within the realm? I mean, do you do you look at something? Is that like, no, you can't really look at that. You just have to look at this year. Do you have goals that? I have goals. Um, if I were to just, I mean, I could just start saying them if you want me to. What are, yeah, well, what are well, some of them? I mean, everybody's got their dreams. Not many people are, like to put them out there because, you know, people I don't, come back I don't mind. and say. If, if, so, if, if somebody, really, if I say my goals and somebody comes to me after I sunk, whatever, haven't accomplished them, that's just going to motivate me more. So really, I'm setting myself <laughs> up for success. So I, I want to earn my academic patch by summer two. So academic patch means that, oh, I forgot exactly what it means. The essentially, Vol patch, right? yeah, the Vol Scholar patch is essentially you're passing all your classes. I'm, I'm planning to get A's in all my classes. Um, get my Vol Scholar patch. Um, I want it to be a, 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 um, a, a freshman All-American. I want to make the All SEC team my freshman year, and wow. uh, I want—I really want to—I want to be productive. I want to get some sacks. Some eight is realistic. I really feel like eight is realistic. Ten is what I'm going for. Yeah, that's where the bar's set with Barnett. And that's the thing I tell him every—I tell him every time I get the chance, you know, just so he knows it's in his head. I mean, there's probably a thousand things going on through DB's head right now, especially being that he reports to the Eagles tomorrow. But I tell him every day, you set the standard in the D line room, and I'm living up to that standard. And he, you know, he's like, you know, he's he's almost like it's not like a year or whatever, but you know, he he's he knows that he knows that I'm different than maybe the next guy, right. and that's what I'm trying to prove. Like I already know I'm different than the next guy, but I don't have to tell you, and you're just gonna have to see it. Yeah, you're gonna have to. Yeah, you're right. There's a there's a lot of prove it when it comes to Tennessee. You know, they they do they recruit the best of the best, and obviously the competition's elite now. You'll have an opportunity to go up against Trey Smith at some point. He seems to be, I'll tell you what, Trey Smith, I got to tell you, he's about the most impressive recruit I've ever seen mm -hmm. as a true freshman. So that, to me, you, you, you've got, I mean, that's the number one recruit in ESPN 300. I see those recruiting rankings sometimes, like, yeah, whatever. The thing is, I've, I've studied them. Um, You've already studied yeah, Trey. Uh, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Joe, he works in VFL films. He's yeah. given me my access to all the spring practices and everything, and don't tell Trey, but I think I really know his week, seriously. Like, I really know, I know, because I've seen, I've seen guys like Quay and guys like, um... Quay, Quay stood him up in the one-on-one. -on -one Quay, get him off balance, and I've seen how they do it. And I really feel like with my length and my hips and my suddenness, that I, I think I, I think I got him. I think you got a chance. No, I'm not going to say I'm going to beat him every time, because he is impressive. I see him playing for us. I see him potentially starting for us. Yeah. I see him maybe – I see him as part of um, the building of the steps to the next oh, level. Oh, there's no question. But I just, I'm just saying you can tell Trey or not this tell Trey, but I, I – This is the way it's supposed to be, though. This is what people don't realize. People go, oh, he's – no, this is the way it's supposed to be. These guys are supposed to challenge each other. It's supposed to be fun, yeah. right? You want, you want the best out of Trey. You want Trey knowing there's this guy coming in here that says you want him to know, yeah, here I am, I'm coming for you because that's what motivates elite athletes. The bigger the challenge, the more they raise their game. And that's why he's willing to throw these goals out. People say, oh, he's just a young guy. No, no, this guy has thought this through. This is something that's these dreams have been playing out in your head. You've worked hard for them, 
and you want any bit of motivation, he's probably hoping somebody will, some other fan will say something on there from Florida. George, believe me, soon enough you'll, you'll, you'll get that on Twitter. They'll, they'll discover uh, who you are. W was there any other, you mentioned the, the Tennessee deal. Was it all about the, the visit at Orange Carpet Day? I mean, what was it that, that, that flipped the switch for you to Tennessee and what made Tennessee? And you mentioned the passion. You like the passion. Coach Strip, obviously, Coach, Coach Jones. But all these schools have passion, right? Or is it just not the same level? What you said when you came in here, you said, I think this weight room would look just a little bit different if we were in Tennessee, Alabama, or Georgia. Right. Around here, there's Duke, there's NC State, there's UNC, there's Wake Forest, and then there's Virginia, Virginia Tech, and Virginia. And out of all those schools, Virginia Tech is obviously the best school. Football school? Yes, as far as football. Everything, everybody else is centered around basketball, you know. Everything is centered around basketball. The fans are, first of all, y'all fans in Tennessee, y'all are crazy, and I love y'all, but y'all are crazy. <laughs> yeah, they're crazy, all right. They're crazy. I believe And I are. love the fact that they're crazy. When I get a second, oh my goodness, when I get a second kneeling, I don't even, I can't tell you what I'm going to do. But when I get a second <laughs> kneeling, I remember when, I remember when Derek Barnett had that sack and uh, stripped Jalen Hurts, and um, we got it. I was about ready to run on the field and high five them, and yeah, everybody man, else yeah. seemed to be. Everybody else seemed to want to go on the field and high five them too. Like that was just so crazy. And then three minutes later, he catches an interception tipped by Shaw Tuttle, and it's just like that, that's crazy to me. And I, I, my goals are to make those plays. I have a few. Uh, I have a, uh, for lack of a better word, a little hit list um, for the some quarterbacks in the SEC. I'm not. I, if 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 the name pops out, it pops out. Supposed to play, supposed to now. play. You're supposed to try and hit every one of them. That's your job. Yeah, but I have I have a I have a little hit list. So when you when you get down to uh, these other schools and we look at Alabama and how they've dominated the SEC, and last year was 49 to 10. There was a lot of guys injured, but why does this incoming class? Because talking to all these 2017 guys, when I say Alabama, they they kind of shrug at me, and I'm kind of like, guys, they've they've dominated, but. What makes this class and this, these new guys coming in so confident that they can compete at that, that level? That's been like a machine. Um, okay, this is another story from two weeks ago. I was with Ryan and Marquez. He's a defensive end out of uh, Atlanta. Georgia, right? Marquez Benbury yeah. and Ryan Thaxton. Me, okay. him, Theo Jackson, and Malik. And Theo said something about uh, the Harris kid over there at Alabama. He was like, oh, I seen him play up a close and real person. He's the real deal. You know, I was just like, no, it's no big deal. He's human too. You know, he's lifting the same weights, pumping the same iron, doing the same drills we're doing. Who says that one of us, maybe even me, won't take him out the game? Not gonna. I'm not speaking anything. I hope he has a fantastic career. Sure. But I want to be Alabama. I want to go undefeated in the SEC. I want to make it to the SEC championship. I want to make all these guys going for the Heisman, the guy at LSU and the guy at Georgia. I want to take them out the game. That's what Alabama did to Fournette last year. How come Tennessee can't do it to everybody else, you know? Right. But, I mean, to do that, we need to listen to our coaches. We've got to stay in the weight room. We've got to be disciplined. We've got to stay in film. We've got to keep our grades right so it's not something that's always on the back of our head. We've got to eat right. All kinds of stuff. It's everything that goes into it. But, hey, why can't we do it? Right? Like, if it's important enough, if the why's there, if the group, if the 2017 class has this collective why, just like when Dobbs came in, and in his first class, and Cam Sutton in Tennessee was on the mat two and fourteen. Those guys decided they had to get Tennessee back on the map, and they did what they could with what they had. Because remember that that team that Butch inherited, they, he didn't inherit a lot. It took a long time to go from two and fourteen and missing the bowls three years in a row to back to back top twenty fives. But now you see this launch point. You know some of the guys you're talking about competing with, people haven't heard of yet. But you know they're there, and they're growing. Like you were telling me, just even seeing Daryl Taylor, you've seen a lot out of him. Oh, yeah, I've seen a lot out of him. Watching the spring game, um, he was super productive in the spring game. Um, I didn't see him get blocked the whole spring game, honestly. He played all across <laughs> the line. And that's not a knock on the offensive line right. at all. I mean, DT was just playing, playing, his, uh, playing his butt off. So um, he was playing great. And I want to come in. I want to make an impact um, like he's making now right away. Yeah, well, there it is. I mean, you know, and, and you're following, uh, you know, Coach Rock's plan. I'll, I'll show him this. I'll just show him the outside. We don't want to give up the inside here. He's got this pretty well-worn folder here. You can see it's a workout. Boy, all those pages are full. So yeah, I got my meal plan in it. 
He's got his meal plan in there. This is the, the game plan for Matthew as he's been following it. When did you start on this program? Week after signing day. Week I said it had been February 9th, February 10th then? Something like that. Yeah, because so. it was first, I think it was February 1st this year. So February 8th. So let's see, February, March, April, May. We're three months in now, and you've got about a month to go. So what's going to happen for you between now and when you report on the 29th? I mean, you're, this is kind of it before you leave the nest here in, in your home. I mean, what do you have left to finish up? Um, I just have one more AP exam. I have a couple goals in a weight room I want to uh, achieve. Um, outside, I've been working on my uh, dip in the shoulder, keeping uh, pad level. I feel like my pad level has uh, gotten better tremendously since uh, the uh, – end of my uh, high school career just uh, at the Shrine Bowl. I dominated the Shrine Bowl. I mean, I was the best guy. What did you end up doing in that game? Did you have any sacks? Or? In that game, I had no, I did not have a sack. I had uh, three quarterback hurries. I had two tackles for loss, and I had uh, seven tackles, and I blew up a screen. It could have been an interception, but I freaking fell. You went, you're but, um, right? Yeah. But you still blew it up. Still got the guy down the last Yeah, scratch. but th those quarterbacks did not like me. Those offensive linemen <laughs> did not like me, and the receivers didn't like me because they could hardly get the ball. They now, were, you seem like such a calm guy. He's polite. He's yes, sir. He's no, sir. He's polite. He's well-spoken. He's intellectual. But you tell me on the field that this isn't the guy that I, this isn't the guy I'd see on the field. Oh, no. At the Shrine Bowl, if you watch it, it's on YouTube. It's on, on several media outlets. Uh, you see me talking to the South Carolina commit. I, I told him that he was garbage because he was. Um, I told him that uh, I was talked to a South Carolina commit wide receiver. Um, he had just scored a touchdown, and I was telling you, oh, you didn't, you're not going to catch another one, and he didn't. And I was talking to the quarterback as I was on the ground with him after hitting him, and I was like, you're not going to throw another touchdown, and he didn't. You know, I just uh, when people play against me, they're not going to like me. Um, I really feel like I was kind of snubbed out of player of the year just because I, 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 I talk to the players on the field and they probably go cry to their coaches or whatever. But, um, I mean, that's just how I am. Football is so – I'm so happy to be playing it and so enthusiastic. You know, I try to put, bridle my tongue, but I'm going to talk, but I'm going to bridle my tongue. So you got that Derek that Barnett – because Barnett, he's always angry now. Yes. That's, oh he's one I was, more angry people Okay, ever. so over Christmas break – um. Here in uh, Raleigh, we have a humongous basketball tournament, stuff like that, and um, it's very exciting. And that was the night Tennessee played Nebraska, and I'm sitting in a basketball game with very, nearly 5,000, 6,000 people all watching a basketball game, and I'm sitting there glued to my phone watching Derek Barnett making sure he's about to get this sack record. Right. First play of the game. First play of the game, he got up the field. He could have had an interception first play of the game. But, um... First play of the game, he got up the field, got in quarterback's face, riled him up a little bit. Could have had an interception, but riled him up a little bit. Okay. Um, second play of the game was a run play, totally opposite of him. Third play of the game, he lays out the quarterback and sits there on the ground and talks to him for five seconds. Oh, he was just like, man, I love it. Like, I love it. I love seeing it. Because, you know, he, he's always plays angry, but you could tell that there was a passion with him playing in his hometown and him chasing after that record, knowing that it was in sight. And it was just awesome to watch. And when I saw him get that record, it was, the, the home team was losing, and I had kind of um, made an exclamation. And, um, <laughs> inappropriate. Kind of everybody, right? It wasn't inappropriate at all, but it was just inappropriate for the situation being that the home team was losing. That's what I mean. You make so noise hard. when they write. They yeah, were. so I was excited and um, texted him after that, congratulated him, and it was just it was awesome, you know. Wow. And I, I, I want to come in, and I, I'm not going to say I'm going to be the next Derek Barnett, or I'm definitely going to break his sack record, even though that's a goal of mine, and that would just be purely awesome, but he set a standard in the defensive line room, and I have to meet and exceed that standard, just like everybody has to meet and exceed that standard. And if everybody does that, we'll be the most dominant D-line in the SEC. And whoever has the most dominant D-line in the SEC is going to win the SEC. You mentioned Khalil McKenzie. That's the guy you connected with. You like what Khalil's going to bring. We were talking earlier, you know, Khalil's a guy that's had some injuries. He was a five-star. You know, he came out of Concord de La Salle, you know, number one D-tackle in the nation, really. And uh, hasn't had the, hasn't been able to meet his goals yet. But from what you've seen of Khalil, you think he's going to be ready, and you like his mindset. Yeah, he he came back from pectoral injury. I watched him on film. Hop in the jersey, he's the first guy in line. He's talking to the guys. His hips are fluid. He's getting full extension. You can tell that there's something there. But he's still going through all the drills 100. percent He just can't go full contact. Right, it's right. precautionary. During the summer when he and all the guys here back, there's going to be some healthy competition, and I plan to 
dominate that competition, even though those guys are my teammates. I love them. Like, I've talked to these guys, and I connect with these guys, especially Khalil and talking to DT. I love his mindset. He's, he's a funny guy off the field. He's serious when he's off the field, just like, you know, all the guys. But, I mean, I love these guys, but I'm, I'm, I'm coming to take somebody's spot because that's what I have to do to play. Right. I mean, that doesn't sound great when I say it, but you know what I mean. You want to get on the field. Yes, sir. There's only four guys that can be on the D-line, so it is what it is. I'm sitting there, you know, on my phone studying not only Trey Smith and figuring out his weakness, but just, you know, studying the guys like, hey, what mistakes maybe are they making in practice that Coach Oak has to correct that I can correct right now on the field with uh, my my position coach, and then I can come in and Coach Oak says, hey, you know, does that maybe better than this guy? Right. That's what I'm trying to do. You're trying to compete at every facet. Yes. There's there's nothing you're going to overlook. Well, it's been, I'll tell you, Matthew, it's been a fun interview. Uh, you know, when I met you at the Orange and White game, you, you were polite, you were proper. I didn't know how much fun it would be. I like the confidence. Obviously, you've worked hard to get to this juncture. And now you've got to jump in with a lot of other guys because, you know, Eric Crosby's a guy I spoke to a few days ago. Big defensive tackle, needs to lose a little bit of weight. But, boy, that frame and that athleticism as a running back Crosby is a guy whose name I think you're going to hear. And then Ryan Thaxton also working hard, desperately working hard up there in Alexandria, Virginia, even further away from football country than you. But uh, Ryan's a guy that really impressed me as well. Really, this 2017 class, folks. I'm not, I'm not kidding you. Butch Jones is – I think Butch is going to have the last laugh because this, this five-star hearts thing that everybody made fun of him about, I think Butch is going to be pointing back at 2017 saying – you know, and I know he, he remembers, believe me, Butch Jones remembers. So from what I've seen out of 2017, I remember too, so. you know, all you guys have got to remember. Because yeah. it, it's almost like people were laughing at the class, like, oh, well, they didn't get this receiver out of Knoxville or this guy going to this guy going to Knoxville or going to Clemson. I guarantee you they would trade one of those Knoxville guys for Matthew Butler. And, and all you got to do, like he said, is put on the film, watch the East-West Shrine game, and then think about the numbers he's put up at the highest level. So we're going to wrap it up from here. Matthew, thank you. Uh, from Garner, North Carolina, I'm Mike Griffith here with SEC Country. You can follow me on Twitter at MikeGriffith32. And where can they follow you? What's your Twitter handle? Uh, Matt Butler underscore 45. That's, um, that's all my social media. So just type that in and you'll find me. All right, well, they'll see you soon enough. <coughs> Thanks a lot. Everybody have a great weekend. Well, let's see. Somebody says, were you alive the last time Tennessee won the SEC? Oh, y'all are funny. <laughs>